Hello to all the meeps and bubbles and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. My name is Luma and today we are going to do whatever the future me is putting on the screen right now. Hello my friends. One of the topics that I want to focus on today is the start of the industrial brick. And since this took around 70 cycles because I had multiple other projects running at the same time and the dupes were a little bit confused what I should build first, this episode will be structured a little bit different than usual. Two of the topics will be put in sequence so you can follow them better. The rest of the video will consist out of the stuff that happened in between. But first, 10 seconds of recap. In the last episode we built a thimble reed farm. The pyramid got expanded downwards and we finally got access to oil so we can build our industrial brick. We also did the usual shenanigans. I want our industrial brick to go here in this mess of polluted oxygen and slime lung. And in order to get power to that we are going to route one of our cables down here all the way down the shaft to the left and hook it up to our main power grid that you can see, no, that you can see here. But I'm not going to use the good cable because we don't have enough metal at the time. Now let's go for the copper and hook this up. Make it the same height as this, like that. Go over and then probably we should use a heavy watt joint plate. Route the cable upwards. By the way, this is the cabling at the moment. As far as the industrial brick goes, I want it to be at the same height as this like so and I'm gonna make the walls out of ceramic the good stuff but only where it is insulated from our steam turbines and I probably will place them on top here. Let's go with a small room for now. Small being like this. We can change that later if we want to. As far as the access goes we could build a couple of transit tubes here and place down another insulation. Okay it's night again. There we go, I waited for it to be day again and maybe I come back to you guys when I have a design in mind. For me to visually design anything, we need to get rid of the ladders first, otherwise I couldn't place down anything. So let's just build a temporary granite floor and then design something. Okay guys, I think I came up with a design. Ignore this for now. First we need some access points for the duplicants so they can reach this and I'm going to place the transit tubes as we did on the other side, about there and there. And then I'm gonna squeeze in a couple of tubes that we can connect up later. So that should be enough for the axis. Something like this should be fine. Deconstruct those. Furthermore, this and this could be the steam chamber and I'm going to place everything that is going to get very hot in there. And the power will come from the steam turbines that we are going to slap on top, like this. First I will need an access point for this, maybe a liquid lock or something like that. But it cannot be moved through steam, so it has to be safe. I think for now I will go with an easy double liquid lock made with naphtha. Therefore we will have to wait for the duplicants to build the stuff that I already placed on. And we will have to fill it up with a little bit of naphtha. Let me check if I have enough for that. We got a couple hundred kilograms, that's probably not enough. So let's produce a little bit more naphtha, make it a manual use. Allow the plastic, fill it up quick, and then disallow the manual you use again. There we go, thank you, Abe. Nice. Now you can go. Rowan, what the heck? Iron ore. Okay. Was that necessary? For our industrial brick, this is how far the duplicants have come. We need to fill in the naphtha, and then we can finally start with the metal refineries and whatever I want to put in there. Also, I want this to be a vacuum, and this can be, uh, I guess this can be hooked up to here, because it should be a normal atmosphere and the duplicants should be able to walk in there. This, on the other hand, will be very hot. I skipped a larger portion of time here, because the duplicants took 27 cycles from boxing this in to this moment we are at right now. Here you see I placed on a lot of gas pumps, pipes and hooked it up to the electronic grid, so we can produce a couple of vacuums, which should make it easier to create the desired atmospheres. Now a short break from the brick. Hey, also, why waste this room? Let's make this a nature reserve. A couple more ghetto setup shenanigans here, so that the output water from the geyser isn't as hot anymore and we can pump it up easier. I think I have never used them, but let's try the space heaters for now. Maybe we can heat up the place a little bit for our dupes, so they don't freeze to death all the time. Each space heater only uses 120 watts and produces 16 kilo DTUs of heat. And because we don't want to cook the dupes, we have to put a little bit of automation down. And with automation, I mean place down a couple of cables and hook them up to a temperature sensor, so it can detect if the desired temperature is reached. 
I tried to hook up a couple more mini pumps here so that the vacuum will be well quicker. I am going to add an access for the duplicates that are already in the suits so they can go to this area right here. Probably just hook it up like this, place one of those and a deconstructor fire pole. You know what, I'm just going to dig this up so that we have access to space and lose a little bit of our polluted oxygen. I'm not going to use that anyways. Take a look at this. Someone dropped something in there that produced slime lung and polluted oxygen. Ah, oh, those dupes. But it's just 6 grams. So I'm going to fill this with high pressure oxygen and place down some body butts. So maybe that helps. As you can see in the background, the body butts did not really help because it's too warm in there. But the high pressure oxygen pressed the polluted oxygen to the top. And now we can build some deodorizers to get rid of that. The dupes also finally finished bringing over the nafta. So we can close off this room in the middle to create a vacuum. That's really simple, we just have to place a row of tiles, wait for the dupes to build it and place another row so that our liquid connects to it and all the gases are destroyed. And after that has happened we can just deconstruct it again. I'm gonna drench the whole floor in the crude oil that we have right now. Not sweep only but all the crude oil. So the heat transfer will be better and it transfers the heat from the steam that we will have here to all the buildings that we place down. Back to our problem child, the industrial brick. Let's take a look at the oxygen overlay. Pure clean oxygen, super nice. So we can deconstruct the unnecessary stuff for now. Whoa, look at the grub grub, very nice. Those tiny beetles lay eggs and there's a chance that there will come a grub grub from the eggs. So now we have one of those things. I told Ellie to catch, capture it and now Ellie should throw the grub grub to our thimble reeds. Let's see if she brings over the grub grub or not. Someone bring in the grub grub? Oh, okay. It is hard to capture that thing. Ooh, bird, you were close to dying. What do we have here? Ethanol, okay. There is. Now bring it. Frankie, thank you. Uh, Grub Grub, you seem to be undecided what room you belong to. Weird. There we go. Back at our industrial brick. Let me tell you what I did here. I place a metal refinery right next to a decor object like this and two auto sweepers. Why two? Because sometimes one auto sweeper can't keep up with the duplicate and the duplicate decides to do something else, which is pretty annoying. Also, I have four conveyor receptacles here. These are for producing steel because I need three different materials and one for just producing regular metal. The next one will only be three. This is for steel. This could be for metal or anything else but let's see what we're gonna do with that um, I just wanted to hook them up in a simple way it uses up a lot of material but it's easier than my delivery system so I could use copper ore for that and just hook this up with four different lines like this and could place the four lines here one line two three four lines Let's see how much material that would use or if I only place one line. Okay, this eats up all of my materials. That would be fine actually and I would need a couple more and uh, four of those. I can deconstruct this and place one, two, three, four there. But my materials, ah, oh, this uses up so much materials. Let me think of something else. Well, Slicksters, you did a great job, but you probably have to die now, which is fine. We have some eggs that replace you. We also could do something like this. We have the metal refinery here and four of the smart storage bins for each element that we want to have delivered to this place. Only one auto sweeper, which is sad because it's very slow compared to the two auto sweepers, one conveyor shut off and one conveyor shoot. The rail will go something like this and the smart storage will tell the rail and will tell the conveyor loader that will be up here in our main storage to send over stuff. Everything that is not needed will be sent back and everything that we produce will also be sent back. So we will only need one line compared to four lines before. It will be slower and not look as cool but this should probably work. This needs to go in a U form. The material comes from here will be dropped down if they need any materials. This also goes on the line. 
probably before the other stuff. So the conveyor bridge bridge on it. So the priority now is on this conveyor. And we probably want to fill in stuff here too. So we can make the loop a little bit bigger, probably like so. And I could feed it back here. So this is the back line and this is the there line. And I need a couple of connectors here, 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 and here. This can be rerouted like so. This can be deconstructed to get connected. These two get connected. Then they will connect up like this and like this. Yeah, doesn't look very nice, but we can replace it later. The back line will need to feed to the dropper. So we can just um, put it here. In order to test this or get this running, we will need a little bit of liquid. I want a crude oil and I want to turn it into petroleum and then use it as a cooling liquid that will be fed into our steam chamber. The heat will be left in the steam chamber, power some steam turbines that I will be putting on top. Let's deconstruct that. Ah, I didn't leave a space for the ceiling light. Uh, we can put it here. The ceiling light is important because it gives the dupes a speed bonus of 10%. And the duplicate sensor is just there so we save on power. The tricky thing is you have to find a spot where both the ceiling light and the dupe motion sensor either detect or reach the duplicate that is working on the machinery. In the background you can see that I already snaked some radiant pipes above the metal refinery and I also tried to put down the steam turbines but that was using up all of our resources. In addition to that I ordered our dupes to drop copious amounts of water with the bottle emptiers into our steam chamber. In this clip you see me try to place down an automatic setup for refined carbon and ceramic but that did not end up as I wanted and we ran out of resources again. To save on material I made all of the temp shift plates out of granite. I want to quickly produce some petroleum. So let's smack down one of those oil refineries and hook it up to our crude oil storage which is this one. After hooking up the crude oil infinite storage to the oil refinery we can hook up the pipe for the petroleum output to a liquid reservoir which I'm going to place right here. Because this probably will be hot I'm using insulation here. The oil refinery finally has been built so we can go to our infinite storage and switch this on. Okay this should be fine. I guess we can switch it off now and uh, the rest will be processed. Oh guys, I sadly forgot to take a look at this maximum gas pressure. I cannot use the oil refinery at this point in time because we have way too high gas pressure. So I'm just going to deconstruct it and use the oil as a coolant because this uh, I cannot wait any longer. The dupes are so slow. It took me 60 cycles just to build a tiny room and I got distracted a lot. Thank you, Abe. Send over the crude oil. And now we can use the crude oil as a coolant for our metal refinery. I'm gonna explain this soon. Here the coolant comes. Maybe we need a little bit more. Yeah, we definitely need more. Switch this back on. First let me explain this. I want a dupe to produce a lot of metal and steel. Therefore I made a setup that can handle metal and steel at the same time. But I only have one auto sweeper so the transfer rate is not that high. I have four different smart storage bins. One is set to iron ore, the next one is set to refined carbon, pure iron and one is set to lime. They are all at 2000 kg or at 200 or 100 for the lime. The conveyor receptacle gets filled with either one of these materials. And how does it get filled? First, the priorities are important. This priority is one, those are three, meaning the sweeper first picks from this one and will try to put it there. If those are already full, it will place it in the conveyor loader. So if we have an element that is already here, it will get sent back. Let's take a look at the loop. Everything that is sent back will follow this one and get dropped into our infinite storage. These four have the same iron ore, refined carbon, pure iron and I guess this was lime, here lime. And they all feed into the same transport line. But they don't get sent at the same time because we have automation. This is how the automation comes to play. We have one automation ribbon that goes from this to our storage. The ribbon just says, if this is full, please write a green signal to 1. If this is full, write a green signal to 2. If this is full, write a green signal to 3 and so on. The green signal then needs to be switched 
to a red signal because the smart bins only send green signals if they are full. We don't want that. We want them to send if they're empty. So we are switching this with a NOT gate. These are the readers. So this looks for the bit one, which was our, let's check that, iron ore. So let's check this again. If iron ore is needed, put in iron ore. If something else is needed, put it in. If this is needed, put it in. And if lime is needed, put lime in. And since they only activate, if they get the right signal, we have a storage right there. And then the stuff gets sent over if we need it. Let's see if we have an example for that. At the moment, only pure iron is needed. Sadly, we don't have pure iron in there, but if we would, the pure iron would be sent over. So let's see if we find pure iron somewhere, put it in there and see if the dupes deliver it. Correction, all of our pure iron is already in here because I set this to 20,000 instead of 2,000. So let's switch this, deactivate this for now. So we can see this working, sending the iron back in tiny parts. Okay, I'm gonna activate this again. So the sending back seems to work, but that wasn't a question. <laughs> I can show you with the lime, I guess. Okay, let's set this to 140 kilogram. So this should be red, this should be green, and it is sending over the lime. This is how this works. This sends over more than actually is needed, but the rest will be sent back. I know this is wasting a lot of energy and stuff, but I think it's pretty cool. There's the lime. This was too much, the rest is sent back. And now we can get one dupe that is permanently producing steel and iron. Forever. So, what our piping does here is if the hot liquid comes out of the machine at 130 degrees or more, it will dump the heat into the crude oil and into the water. This will turn to steam if this gets hot enough and our steam turbines, which we placed on top, will suck up the steam and produce energy. Also, I forgot to place the, these ones. Now for the semi-automatic production of refined carbon and ceramic. Everything that we need for carbon and ceramic can be placed inside the storage bins and the auto sweeper will automatically place it in there and the stuff that is done we can send back. So we can place in coal here, consumable ore, coal and they can place in 20 tons of this, I don't care. We have enough to uh, we have enough coal, 400 tons. <laughs> And uh, this ceramic needs clay, so this can be filled with clay, probably at soil, exactly. I'm not sure how much clay we have, by the way. Let's check that. 35 tons, that's not, that's not much. So, and stuff that we want to send back, consumable ores, but we only want to send back the refined carbon and the ceramic. There it is. And I built this out of copper ore. Oh, come on. This is made out of iron. This probably should be made out of steel too. And I'm gonna set this to ceramic forever and this to refined carbon forever. And I'm gonna set the priority to one so the dupes don't deliver that all the time. The temperature here will rise so we need an aqua tuner to cool all this area down. But we need steel for that. So steel production first. First uh, steel production, guys. Insufficient steel, come on, don't lie to me. 60 kilograms, oh man. And this is made out of iron too, oh come on. Rookie mistakes. Okay, first steel production. And since I don't want to build that again, because it's quite annoying, we can just smack down one of those and it can reach the next one, which we can place right here. Made of ceramic, correctly. And we need more cables, which are made out of iron too. Let me pause the game because it's quite laggy. A little bit more plumbing in the same way that we did over there. In 
In the background you can see that the energy from the metal refineries was already enough to heat up the water to a degree that it flashed to steam. The steam quickly condensates back to water at the moment because of all the tiles that we built in there made out of granite. I also probably shouldn't run the cold material through the hot steam chamber. It's not very smart. So I was a little bit uh, cheap on the rails. Take a look at this. It looks like the material is taking the steps. We have a hot refined carbon coming in. The metal is cool enough to be transported, but the carbon is quite cold. But we have so much mass here that is very cold that it doesn't really matter at this spot. But before it reaches this spot, it makes this an uncomfortable 80 degrees somewhere in the future. So we could probably insulate the parts where it matters, like those right here. We don't need this anymore. Here in this next part I'm preparing the cooling for our metal refinery room. A aqua tuner will be placed in the steam room and the cooling loop will run through the floor which I'm replacing with a granite floor or metal floor. Therefore I will need the insulation one tile lower. The cooling loop from the aqua tuner will run through the floor, so I'm going to make every second pipe piece a radiant pipe. And after the duplicates finish that, we can replace the floor with a granite floor and connect up all the pipe pieces. The cooling loop will connect to the white part of the aqua tuner. Coolant will flow clockwise onto the temperature sensor, get checked, if cold enough, get sent into the loop. And if not cold enough, gets cooled down by the aqua tuner. Here we are again. I already filled the loop. I used crude oil because I had nothing better that I can use right now. I'm going to replace that later with petroleum or something like that. Probably even polluted water. Not sure. Here you can see how I hooked up the aqua tuner. The liquid goes over the sensor. The sensor, I can activate it now, is set to if everything that is hotter than 18 degrees, turn this thing on. Then if the stuff is cooled down, it bridges over onto this pipe. But this pipe has priority. It comes from here, bridges over, and then it is one solid pipe. And this pipe only bridges onto this pipe. So this is the priority pipe. Meaning the liquid that is already cold enough will be sent over and has priority over the liquid that is only freshly cooled. Also, if this backs up, this also has priority. And now that we activated this, this should start cooling. Yep, it does. Also, because we placed down the granite floor that was a little bit colder than the floor before, we cooled down this room around 10 degrees. Because I overfilled this loop a little bit, the pipes are blocked for the metal refinery. So I'm just going to place in a liquid reservoir to the left of both of these pipe systems. Then we just have to connect them up, wait for the dupes to build it and deconstruct one pipe piece in the middle. Now we can use this as our buffer tank. By the way, I build them out of steel. Another statue to the right of the metal refinery, placed on the light bulb and connect it up to the motion sensor. And now while the dupes are doing this, we can add another rock crusher or even two, maybe to the right of the statue. Connect everything up with a cable, maybe another light source to the right, if I find a space for that. Then, after the dupes finished building the rock crusher, we can set it to eggshells to lime. For now, I'm going with 80 each. Then we can add the missing steam turbines, as well as the water outlet, and wait for the dupes to build them. As you can see, the energy output of the machineries that we hooked up is already enough to heat up the steam for 6 turbines not running at full capacity. And now the rest of the episode will show you everything that happened in between building the industrial brick. For example, showing how to build a glitch pump in a survival game, as well as more infinite storages. First, let's take care of some minor things. This can be replaced with glass so our oxygen stays inside a pyramid. Secondly, the water that comes from our geyser is way too hot, so it is heating up our power shaft. So I'm going to insulate all of the pipes. Next up, what the heck? Take a look at this. This is nuclear waste. I have no clue where we got nuclear waste from on the main planetoid. Maybe I produced it with a bug I found out. The bug being, if one of those generators hits an airflow tile or hits a mesh tile, it will create nuclear waste. Also, every dupe that hasn't gotten it already will get the exosuit training, because all the dupes will be in atmosuits a lot. 
In order to get more metal, we need to refill the metal refinery. Because we don't have water at the moment, because we already used it up, we can empty out the polluted water bottles. So let's see how much we have. We have a polluted water bottle right here. That's 24 tons. Very nice. Empty that out and maybe empty out this one. This is 24.8 tons. And then we can hook this up again, deconstruct that, high priority for that and a low priority for this. And while we wait, we can do another thing that you guys suggested. And that is going to the priorities and setting toggling to a high priority so every dupe does the toggling when I tell them to. Are you going to empty it? Ah, they emptied it. Nice. There's my water. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, we got 19 tons here and 21 tons here that we could reuse. I think this is enough now. Okay, cancel. Stop. Holy sh... <laughs> I told you to stop. <laughs> okay. I guess they stopped now. Here on Uzista, I made a dupe spilled a longer cable made out of what's it called cobalt ore stuff. And now we can place down more of the solar panels. And because they updated the game, you can place down the solar panels on top of the cables again without having problems. So this is too much cable. We can cut a couple of tiles here and place down the last solar panel right there. Sleeping puffed in space. Not sure it knows where its natural habitat is. Another tip from you was to go to the schedule and give all the dupes one bath time slot before they go to sleep so they have a lower chance of dropping their food when they get to the mess hall or the great halls. We can also keep on going with the research a little bit more. So I'm going to get rid of this module right here and this module right there. And I'm going to replace it with a lot of solar panel modules. So we have enough power for the duplicant to do a little bit of research when he's in space. This has been closed off and I'm going to rebuild the building. By the way, if you're wondering how much power we get from this, basically nothing. It's just 11 reds per cycle, mostly safe, but <laughs> I think it's kind of neat for now. And we also do have that thing here, which produces, oh, my nafta, which produces 81 rats per cycle. That's better. What are we researching at the moment? Environmental appreciation. Well, that's fine. The liquids that I'm sending over from the other planetoid, Ozista, has already filled three of our liquid reservoirs, so I'm building four more. Mary, are you fine? You seem to be a little bit frozen in time. You too. What is wrong? Look at him. <laughs> Take a look what's printing. We got a little bit of coal and we are going to print it on Uzista. Okay, Joshua dug up a couple of tiles, but they did not build much. That probably has to do with turnaround not being able to dig, which is kind of annoying. But at least he can build very slowly. Here it seems that the duplicants have released a little bit more water. First they do nothing and then they do too much. Dupes, gotta love them. Here on Uzista, I'm going to design a bedroom and a little bit fancier bathroom for our dupes so that the morale is higher and I can finally give them the super duper hard digging and we can get access to the natural gas geyser and the chlorine gas vent so I can send over the gas to our main planetoid. Okay guys, I placed down a bathroom for our duplicants here on Uzista. The used bathroom water will just be stored in here and we can chlorine it later. By the way, our space heaters have been built so we can set the temperature to the desired value. If below 22 degrees, turn on the heating system. Now let's copy this over and see why we don't have any power because that tile has not been built yet. So they couldn't get access to this like that. Let's try this differently. Yes, the five tile high rooms are a little bit annoying. But I want those to line up and otherwise it wouldn't have happened. Missing tile. Because they changed that you can run a cable through the solar panel, the solar panel no longer is counted as a tile, is that correct? So is the oxygen escaping from all of those spaces? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, so it just doesn't count as a wall tile anymore. So we can deconstruct those two. Weird. The dupes have been giving the order to replace the missing plants. And to finish the queued up, build commands. And done. Space heater working and the temperatures are rising. Nice. Ooh, I almost forgot. I guess it is time to activate our water supply again for our oxygen. As you can see, we have only 1.4 kilogram of oxygen in there and not 140 or something. That also affects our pyramid as you can see here. The oxygen is getting a little bit thin. Lava eggs or briar seeds. Maybe we can keep the lavas alive this time. Huh. For now, I'm going to place the lava eggs right in here. Nice Ellie, thank you. Now we can drop it and wait for them to hatch. 
Up here I let the duplicants dig up the material, so the cold mass does no longer have contact to our uh, granite, which is transmitting the heat very well. To get a couple frames back I'm murderizing the critters all over the base. But not all of them, I'm going to leave at least one of every kind. It also may be time for the main transit tube line, but since there are a couple of buildings in the way, we can deconstruct those here. I already rerouted the cable, so we can deconstruct all of this cabling down here, and then place down, this can go too, and then place down the transit tube. Yeah, I think I'm going to place them right here, if I have the space. This will be the space for the larger rockets. How big can the rockets get? That should be fine. Combat. Ah, they're killing the critters. At the moment we don't have enough magma for our system to activate on its own. Let me show you. Reset the timer. You can see the magma tile is too small to drop down. So I'm going to fill in a couple of bottles of magma from down here. And I'm guessing we need to build our glitch pump very soon. The cable construction is going on. Let's see what's going on on Resistor. Nice, the room has been built. Joshua, who is a little bit blue, so he got the cold. And turn around, have their beds finally. Now they just need a little bit of decor. And also I placed this in the temperate biome. So this may help with his cold. Nice how they are sleeping right next to each other. The cable has almost been built. The solar panels on Uzista have finally been finished. The storages are filling up faster than I anticipated, so I am adding three more. Another delivery of ethanol. I think in order to get our power system reliable again, I need to pump up more of the magma. I'm going to place a glitch pump right here, therefore I will need a lot of steel doors. At the moment we don't have enough steel. Therefore I'm going to produce 40 orders of lime, so 5 kilograms each. And let the duplicants produce more steel again. Joshua here isn't doing his work because he can't breathe, so I'm going to add a couple of those oxygen masks. First build one of those, hook it up to the power grid and build a couple of stations for the oxygen mask. Like one checkpoint here and two of those oxygen mask docks right next to it. Maybe get this out of the way and build two more. And someone is suffocating. Harold, that's not here. Harold is suffocating. Harold here. Oh, that's not good. Harold is digging his own grave. So Harold, stop that and try to rescue yourself. Go there, Harold. As you can see here, this is how far our transit tube system has gotten. The duplicants almost built the transit tube system. So they can be faster in our industrial brick. More slug eggs. Not sure if you really need it. For now I'm planning on only letting the dupes in the suits access to the industrial brick. So I'm going to close this off temporarily. Maybe we change it up later. Um, I'm adding a little bit more to the bathroom. This will be the access points for the dupes to the industrial brick. And come on game, this needs to be built and deconstructed so the dupes from other access points don't have access to that. The barbecue on Ozista is running low, so I'm planning on sending some over. But this time I'm not sending over 1000 kg or all of our barbecue, but only like 1 or 2 kilograms. Therefore I'm going to place a ration box right here. An auto sweeper hooked up to a manual switch, so I can activate it, set this to 1 kilogram, and it will put it in there and I can send it off. Okay, they built what Okay, they built what should have been built. Now let's see, we need some edible stuff. Edible like barbecue, but this is no manual use exactly. Then this we will set to barbecue also, but only to about one kilo one kilogram. Come on, where is the freaking problem? Set it to one kilogram and let the duplicants deliver that quickly. There we go. Then we can deactivate this. This one is already activated. The priority of that one needs to be lower, but I already dropped it, dropped it in the floor, so it doesn't matter. It picks it up, sends it over, activate it and send over. Now we send over one kilogram of barbecue. Let's see. Turn around already picking it up and we got 4,000 calories. That's four days. That's not enough. Let's send over a couple more calories. There it is. Ah, our tiny rocket. Let's place down a couple more of the solar panel modules. Made out of glass. Okay, that's all of them. What is happening here? Okay, let's just build it. Ah, there we go. Here in Ista I'm building a couple of storage bins so that a dupe that cannot dig can store a little bit of stuff and maybe give me back a couple of FPS. <laughs> I know this is not a fine art, but take a look at this mess. I'm just 
placing a couple of the space heaters here and let's see how good they work. Normally I would just flood this with a hot liquid or pump something in there, but I want to see how good they work. Also, let's not forget about the automation cable. So let's place down like one sensor every two of those, maybe like uh, this, and connect it up with an automation wire made out of iron. So those two, those, and those, and uh, those two. Okay, what do we have here? Pinch of pepper seeds or omelets? I think I'm going to print the omelets on the other planetoid. We are running low on water again, so we can release another bottle. Empty this one, this is just 18 tons, and empty this one, this is just 21 tons. Let's see if they do this this time. Nope, they don't. Nice ruby, nice. More polluted water, more emptying. Yes. A little bit more gold amalgam, nice. At the moment we are using so much power that our smart battery isn't filled up even though the system is running. So we can increase the rate of the system by dropping down the seconds here to maybe like 30 seconds red duration and then it drops down another pool of magma. Let's see if that helps. Cool down, picked up, send over, system is running and the battery is increasing, nice. Because of the extra rooms that we gave to Joshua, his morale got a little bit higher than we used to, so we can finally give him the super duper hot digging. What that means is we can finally do this and get access to the natural gas geyser and the chlorine vent geyser. I want to remove all the atmosphere docks because I want to expand on our infinite storages here. We have to remove the nature reserve here. And I want to expand on our infinite gas storages. So this has to go somewhere else and we need another entrance. Maybe I'm just going with a stack liquid lock now. I already prepared a room here. This is where I want the atmosphere docks to go. Who's scolding again? Because what are you... Just stop it. Take the nafta from somewhere else, guys. This is annoying. We got new printables. A little bit of rust. To increase the duplicate speed, I'm going to build a liquid lock because eight duplicates were idle. So we can increase the rate if the duplicates can go in and out here. Let's go with nafta and crude oil. That should be a good combination. Set this high priority, enable auto battling and wait for the duplicates to do that. Also a little bit of space. Idle again. Unbelievable. Then we can uh, prepare our gas pipes for the oxygen for the suits. Let's just... Ah, uh, we got a piping here. It could be annoying. Let's go with this place. After we plant the oxygen supply pipe for our atmosphere docks, we can go back to the bottle emptier and create our stacked liquid lock. Therefore, I was dropping down nafta and crude oil. That's the wrong sequence, by the way. Now that we created the stacked liquid lock, we can get rid of the excess liquids. We can do that by dropping the liquid one tile down and mopping it up and deconstructing one tile and dropping it down to the ground on the other side. The lock has been built, now to the atmosphere docks, made out of iron and I'm placing 10 right here. A little bit of salt water. Look at our tiny slicksters that hatched here. Aren't they cute? And uh, well, escapey. Still cute though. Another snazzy suit, why not? By the way, we could build some snazzy suits ourselves. Where is it? Oh, it's the other building. Let's place it down right here. Hook it up to the cable. And now we have access to the snazzy suit as soon as they build it. In the meantime, I produced a couple of snazzy suits for our duplicates. So let's see who doesn't have one at the moment. We have Mary with a cool vest. No, Mary, you get a snazzy suit. Ruby, snazzy suit too. Okay, I need to click the another one. Uh, Mary again. And the third one for Nicola. Oh, I'm, oh wow, I'm using up so much power that all of our reserves are empty. Probably should turn off some of those heaters. <laughs> they did a decent job here and absolutely no job on the right side. The best job did the red ball generator and this is a little bit too hot i set it to 22 okay i think i can deconstruct the red ball generator now and let's check here okay this is not running well that explains it probably because this tile is too small yep 
dead again. Okay, we gotta do something about that. I think it is time that we build a glitch pump. So let's see. I wrongly prepared something right here. We need to deconstruct this so we have a little bit more space. We need four or five doors, mechanized airlocks made out of steel. And we need a little bit of space so that the magma can drop down further. Also, we need one big spike. I'm using for the spike the wall right here, which leads exactly to our minor volcano. The door has to be closed for that. So I'm going to replace this door with a better one that I can check manually. Also, I'm gonna hook it up to a switch. So for the glitch pump, we will need a couple of doors. Then here and here we have one space. Nice. A little bit of obsidian here, here and the whole wall. Then it needs to be reachable and we have to wait for the duplicates. And because we don't have any power, I'm going to deactivate those so they don't suck up all of my power. Uh, come. If above 50, copy this over because above 50 is not going to happen here. Or here. I'm not sure there. Let's check that. 40. Okay, so they, are sh they should turn off now. Why? Ah, well that explains that. <laughs> Back at the glitch pump, we will need two more doors and then we need to close this off with a couple of insulation tiles. And after we place them down and close off the room, the dupes can dig up the remaining abyssal light tiles, place down a couple more ladders, Connect the doors with two different types of cables, one electronic cable and one automatic cable, both made out of steel. We can then take the automation cable and route it to the right, where we will hook it up to an end gate. The end gate now has two possible inputs. One will be used for the timer sensor, which gives us the pulse at which the door opens and closes. And one will be used for a manual switch, so we can turn that thing off when we want to. After that, we can replace the pitcher pumps. Keep in mind that only the lower parts of the pitcher pump can touch the magma, otherwise it will melt. We have to quickly send all the injured dupes to the triage cord. And then we wait for the duplicates to finish this next part. By the way, the pitcher pumps are there, so the dupes can get rid of the remaining magma to the right. That is important for the following reason. Underneath the doors cannot be any liquid because the liquid has to fall down to get transported upwards. You can submerge the glitch pump in liquid, but that will delete liquids. That is why we try to prevent that and let the liquids fall down and maybe accumulate underneath the doors. Let's see, if we want to use the glitch pump, there will be a lot of magma transported up here. So we probably don't have access to this anymore in the way we have right now. So let's build a little bit of obsidian up here, like that, expand the ladder, and we will get access from maybe up here. Deconstruct this tile, this door can then be closed, and uh, we have access from the top. Also, we have to close this off here, otherwise our door made out of iron ore will melt. We practically also don't need a door right here. We could just close this off entirely. Okay, the iron got transferred upwards. Very nasty. Hey, what did you do? Go on the other side. This will not end well. I probably should make an access to here. We got a pipsqueak, that is quite nice, so let's get it. But on Uzista. A couple of things on Uzista. As you can see, I enclosed our natural gas geyser as well as our chlorine vent geyser with a little bit of material and placed down a gas pump here and here, hooked up to the sensor. The sensor just says to the pump if the pressure, let's say, is above 1800 and grams, then pump up every excess gas. The gas pipe leads this way and it gets sent over to the other planetoid. So we can go to our main planetoid and if we want to, we could have access to that gas. Maybe we just store it for now. What does our storage say? Chlorine and one more slot for natural gas. That could work. So we can hook it up to our infinite storage and everything should be fine. There's our Herald. Herald is hooking it up. Come on. There we go. And there are our gases. We got a little bit of oxygen. Natural gas, oxygen, very nice. Probably the chlorine will come later. And then it will go into our infinite storage. Let's see if it filters itself. That's very important. Here it comes. 
The oxygen is being filtered out. Only the natural gas keeps on going. The natural gas builds a loop and gets filtered, as you can see here. Everything else, by the way, would end up in our base. The magma transfer is coming along pretty good. You can see this magma is already gone. Here is a little bit solidifying and the rest is ending up here and providing the base with more power. Okay, so let's set this back to um, if below 20, then please activate. <laughs> Joshua doesn't look very happy. <laughs> he has to work in the sun a lot, so he gets sunburn. Also, his barbecue was empty, so he got a little bit stressed because he has to do a lot of stuff. So Joshua, come on, get your barbecue. I sent over some more. There you go, Joshua. Lying with a sunburn next to a dried out plant in a hydrogen atmosphere. That doesn't sound very nice. Also, debris. The dupes almost got rid of all the magma that was down here. So I think we can keep on building a little bit more. Let's build the remaining insulation tiles and relocate the pitcher pumps so we can suck up the remains of the magma. The automation for the doors will be the following. You set each of them red and green to 0.8. Why 0.8? Because that was the value that the doors kept on working at speed 1, 2 and speed 3. But I wouldn't use speed 3 if you are using the glitch pump. And you should definitely not use the 10 times speed. The glitch pump is in so far influenced by the speed of the game or lag that the doors won't close at the right time when the magma is falling down. This can be compensated by adding more doors but we only have this much space. So we try to avoid that. We got a chance for some pufflet eggs. Well, our place is a zoo anyways, so maybe I use them, maybe I eat them, not sure. Oh, look at this. Angry poke shell, so there needs to be, yeah, there's an egg right there. So if any dupe comes in here at the moment, the dupe will get punched. Back at the glitch pump, we can now add the remaining steel door, close it off with the insulation, and then dig one tile, place one insulation tile, dig one tile, until we reached the top. We also need power down here, otherwise the doors wouldn't close in the speed that we want them to. So I'm just going to place a simple cable and a transformer right there. The cable underneath the doors is made out of steel, the rest can be copper ore. Okay guys, the glitch pump is done. The problem now is we need to get some magma to this spot. We have a lot of magma here, which we can get here. But at the moment there is our whole material that we filtered through the last couple of cycles. So I'm going to drop every new material with our conveyor on top here. And I'm going to use those storage bins with a very high priority and sweep only command at add, let's see, metal ore and mineral. Refine metal, copy this over, and then I'm going to pick this up. Also, they need to finish this as quickly as they are doing this. Okay, they picked it up. Wow, that was fast. Holy moly. Okay, set this to 5 and wait for them to build that. Power transformer, overheating. Well, of course, made out of iron. That wasn't very smart. Deconstruct that and rebuild it. And this time make it out of steel. Very nice, the dupes finished this, so our stuff doesn't get dropped here anymore, but up here. Now we have access to the magma, and the magma should end up right there. Therefore, we could use all the magma that is here, but this here will get used for our smelter, so we should not use that up all the way. The smelter does need very much energy, so we could cut it off here, I guess. Okay, it's time for the glitch pump. Let's deconstruct this tile and see if we can get this to work. Because, as you can see, our magma tile is too small to drop down. Good timing, by the way, door. Gene, thank you. So, now reduce the speed. The magma is here already. And now we can turn on the signal. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Turn this on. And... Yep. You can see the magma being crushed by the doors, but it's not deleted. Take a look at this. 600 kilogram, 600 kilogram and 600. So we're gonna fill this up quickly. Yeah. Speed 2 works too. Keep your eyes on the magma pocket and on our magma storage tank. There you can see how effective the glitch pump is in only one cycle. We started at the beginning of 544 and ended on 544. Okay, I think we can deactivate our glitch pump now because the magma is... Stop it. Thank you. Because the magma is now too tiny of a tile to drop down anymore. So we either have to dig this up, but I need the heat for our smelter, or we need to get in 
maybe this pocket with the tunnel. Also, we have the volcano here and a lot of magma here. Sadly, the glitch pump has to be at least four doors. So we could probably get rid of this one, but we need four doors. This is how much magma we have at the moment. This should last a couple of cycles. Here you can see me making space for more infinite storages. Whoa, guys, I just wanted to empty out an oxygen bottle, but take a look at this. 2,119 kilograms of oxygen. Better not release that in here, I guess. It seems we have a minor problem here on Uzista. As you can see, our oxygen is pretty thin. That has to do with our electrolyzer not being able to produce since we don't have water. And we don't have water because our water sieve ran out of filtration medium. So we need sand. Probably need to produce some sand with a rock crusher. So we could make uh, ceramic, no, eggshell to lime, fossil to lime, granite to sand. There we go. Let's do at least 40 of those and make this a high priority so our dupes don't, well, suffocate to death. Exactly, Turner. You get a gist. Now get there and produce my sand. Get Turner. Okay, he picked up granite. There we go. And he's gone already. Take a look at this. The power waste was actually helpful. Now we have a nice 23 degrees here. But I guess we can finally fill the bathroom with the water. Maybe in the next episode. Okay everyone, a couple more things. For this episode I put down a save file in the description, so if you want to play on this map yourself you can download it and take a look at the mess I produce everywhere. Secondly, sorry for the long episode, I did not intend to make it this long, I just noticed when I was editing that it was taking a long time. Also, if you don't want to miss out on future episodes, you can press on the bell icon and you get notified whenever I post something. By the way, thanks to the great Oxygen Not Included community, there is now a threat in the clay bug tracker for the disease clinic not working and not healing the zombie spores. Shout out to Zero Haven making the threat and the devs of Oxygen Not Included, Clay Entertainment, probably fixing it in one of the next updates. So guys, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the time-lapse for the infinite storages for liquids and gases. Also, if you stay to the end, there's a tiny bonus clip. Love you guys and Luma out. <laughs> I didn't keep an eye on the water. We used up all of the water to produce oxygen again. So we have 1500 kilograms per tile here. This is crazy.